so sorry for the logistics challenges. Uh, one of the one of the things that you kind of go through with a, a, a setting such as this. Um, today we're going to be talking about building a Netflix clone with JavaScript, GraphQL, and DataStax Astra. Um, th there, there is a uh, Netflix. And let me give you some background here. Is Netflix has has uh, several thousand uh, servers that they that use at their back end. And they use a lot of GraphQL and REST. I know some of the engineering team um, at Netflix uh, on the back end. They run on a database called Cassandra, Apache Cassandra, which I think you probably are familiar with. Um, they found over time that uh, having developers have access to their own databases and and you know free reign to do whatever they wanted to was probably going to be a bad idea. And so they kind of decouple things, as you might imagine. You have like microservices and APIs, and then you have the data layer underneath, and they have between five and 10 people that are managing uh, tens of thousands of, of uh, or several thousand Cassandra instances across the world. And Cassandra was really nice because you could say, we're going to launch in 190 countries. How do we do that? Let's spin up all these clusters with all of our automation. And, and then we have our APIs above above the database and then that team of five to ten people manage the database under the covers and they have these these apis that they surface um, that allow them to uh, have kind of like a, an, an easy shim in between to get to the to get to the underlying data and that's for recommendation data that's for the the list of movies uh, or lists of lists of movies um, and and that's kind of where we come in here is if they were to do it again today, I talked to them about a year ago, a couple of people that I know at Netflix, and, and we were doing some API design work with our managed Cassandra offering called Astra. Um, so just to give, give you a little bit of background, um, so I, 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 I have some familiarity there. And then what we can do today is to build something from the ground up that's similar to what um, they have in their infrastructure. My name is Jeremy Hanna. Uh, I've been in the Cassandra community, the Apache Cassandra community, since about 2010. Um, I'm joined by a couple of people in the chat. Eric Ramirez, who's based in Melbourne, um, met him about, what is it, seven years ago. Uh, he came on to DataStax. He's all over the place in the community. So just a shout out to Eric. He answers tons of questions from around the world, and it's especially during lockdown. I don't know if he, he sleeps very much because he's just around the world help, helping people with things. And so if you have any questions, he's he's a good person to ask. Um, I've been a software developer for years, um, been at DataStax for about nine years as the company that sponsors a lot of development on Cassandra. But um, this is more about the, the layers above Cassandra and how that can be more approachable. Um, and what just some housekeeping what's coming uh there's a cassandra day it's a full day of a, like a introductory track and a veteran track that's going to be on october 22nd if you'd like to participate in that either in presenting something interesting um, or or re registering for free um, these are the links and then this is a link to the workshops that are going to be um, going on beyond that or you know other workshops that are going on but this one's focused on australia and new zealand obviously um, and it's going to be uh, 10 a.m uh, australia eastern time so uh, we're looking forward to that so would would uh, love to have you guys come all of you come if you have any questions post the presentation we have a discord so dtsx dtsx.io slash discord um, and there, there's that that's going to survive P, beyond the API days, but feel free to ask in the chat. We're there in both places, and so I just wanted to let you know there. So the nice thing about this workshop today is that you don't really have to install anything. You can be in your browser. That's all I'm in is just in my browser um, to be able to uh, to execute everything in this workshop. You have GitHub. 
for the source code, the exercises, and the slides. Um, you have Gitpod, which gives you a visual code, like the, the, the Microsoft visual code um, environment. You have Netlify to deploy and run and host the things that we're going to be doing today. And then you have the Astra database, which is allows you to have uh, GraphQL and GraphQL Playground, and that connects directly to the database. And, and you can see it's pretty simple, and it's, an, it's an, one of the native interfaces on our Astra database. So your mission, should you choose to accept it in the kind of old school Mission Impossible context is to deploy a Netflix clone to production over a global CDN using a new SQL database with paging and infinite scrolling. Good luck. So for the, for the course of this, we're going to kind of cheat a little bit because we'll have a, uh, a GitHub repo that will give us some guidance here uh, and some setup. But uh, I think this will be a fun exercise. Uh, and, and it kind of shows you how you can uh, use the GraphQL APIs on top of Cassandra. This is the basic setup as we have like a, a reactive interface, a React interface on top of GraphQL. And that GraphQL um, goes down into the database. Uh, and it's, it's just another seamless API that can be written on top of uh, Cassandra in this case. Um, the, the, the gateway itself, <clears throat> so when we talk to Netflix uh, about our plans to include better APIs so that people didn't have to rewrite, you know, I mean, there's always a, a, a capability of writing to the database, native database interface with like you put in your dependencies and all of that, but um, we wanted to meet developers where they were. And so we created an open source gateway, um, and you can host this on top of your existing Cassandra cluster or you know whatever Cassandra-based solution that you have. And then uh, it's a native interface within Astra. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you that um, and after I give you just a little bit of architectural background here. So um, well, why don't we just jump in? So if we go to this. URL and Eric, if you wouldn't mind putting that into the environment, there um, is the Datastax Devs App Dev Week Three GraphQL. And if you want to follow along, that's great. Um, all of this is self-contained, and there's a, a, a live demo that Anya Kubao. Um, if you haven't seen some of her kind of live coding exercises, she's pretty amazing. She's just she blasts through stuff and is very engaging. Um, she did like a three hour version of a similar exercise um, with us. And this kind of takes some of that and puts it into a shorter form so that you can get it all done and you have an example. So if you wanted to do this yourself and, and wanted to have some examples of, of how to hook it all up, uh, this, is a, th this, this allows you to play with it a little bit more. Um, so as we're starting, you can do it on your own computer. Uh, I like GetPod because this allows you to, um, and, and Netlify, just because it allows you to have kind of just like a, a persistence out in the cloud so you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to pay for anything in the workshop. Everything is free. Um, and you'll need a GitHub account and probably Chrome or Firefox in order to do this. Uh, and Netlify and AstroDB will be worked through through the exercise. So no big deal. Uh, you can follow along. It shouldn't be too, too bad. There's some slides in here. There's the Discord chat. Dis Discord chat. Um, but let's just jump in. Um, So what we'll want to do is to start up with going to Astra. So just go to astra.datastacks.com. And then you get to this screen. Uh, this will allow you to register. And if there's no credit card, it's a free developer account. And you can deploy databases and all sorts of stuff. And so I have a free account. I don't even use a paid account. Um, which is kind of handy because I can do any kind of proof of concept or create whatever databases I want. 
And it's a little bit different than what you might normally expect from a Cassandra database. Because Cassandra typically, like a Netflix uses it this way, they have thousands of instances of Netflix that are persistent. They're there all the time. They span it across multiple availability zones. And it's, it's basically you're on instances of they use a lot of AWS. Um, in our case, uh, what we've done is we've seen that uh, cloud native applications and kind of serverless and um, operations have been more of a, a a draw from from like the the ease of use as well as elasticity as well as um, cost perspective and so what we've done is we've created a cloud native serverless version of Cassandra which hides any sort of infrastructure and all you really pay for or even care about is the throughput and the throughput you pay for per million read requests per million write requests and then you pay a monthly cost for storage and it operates on um, AWS, GCP, and Azure. Um, and so let's just go ahead and create our database in here. Uh, so let's kind of follow along with this. So I'm going to create a database in Astra. Um, going to get Netflix Workshop DB in here. I'm going to put it in Australia East in Azure so that it's nice and local. And then I'm going to make a Netflix key space to try to just give seed our kind of seed our foundation here. And like I said, all of this is free. You don't need to, to worry about any cost here. So let's go ahead and create this database. And it'll just be just a minute for that to, to get spun up. This is just activating right now. And you can have any one of a number of databases. You don't have to pay for database instances at all. Um, even if I were on a paid plan, you just pay for what consumption that you use which is kind of handy. So let's go on here. There's It's pending. And so it'll take a couple of minutes, and then I'll receive an email. Let's see. It'll be, oh, I, I've done it a couple of times today, so I'm kind of re, restarting all of this. But oh, it looks like it may be on mine. Region, oh, the region availability is online. Never mind. So it's still pending. It might just be another minute. Um, what I need to do now is create a security token. And so what I want to create in here is that Astra operates on the pr principle of least privilege, uh, being a good kind of like multi-tenant system. And so I'll go in here, and I can just go into manage organization settings. The nice thing here, too, I like about this is that if I have a buddy that I'm, I'm working with, and he or she is is creating a database. I can um, I can add them to my organization or vice versa, and we can work on the exact same database. And it's still a developer account across us, and so I have my own personal organization. Um, and I go in here, and I say I need to create a token. And so, like it says in here, if you're following along, you create a token with database administrator. So I come in here, and I did that today. And I have a database administrator. So what you do is you just say database administrator. And this gives you specific access. You can have a custom role as well. And you can give it specific read write access and have a service account and do all sorts of stuff. Um, this allows you to do things like create a, a private endpoint, like a, like a uh, private link type of endpoint um, and that sort of thing. And so if I generate that token, I've, I've already done that, but let me just generate another one just for fun. Um, if I go in here, I can download that and save that to my environment. And then let me get a new screen here just for fun. And I'll, I'll go into my environment here and it looks like it's active now. So this is my database ID. I'll go in here. And um, I have my Netflix key space. Let's take a look at the health of this. And let's see if there's another, what's next on our, our checklist here. So I'll want to go into Open GraphQL Playground. And so I'll connect to my database. So here's my um, Grafana display for my database. 
Um, but I need to go into the GraphQL API. You can connect with a lot of different things. You can use Spark with it, and you can use all of these interfaces, but one of the native interfaces is GraphQL. Um, and so I'm gonna start a playground to mess around in. And what it'll ask me for is in the HTTP headers, there's a token under the covers. Um, so that was the token that I created here. So if I go in here and I use my headers down here, all right, that's it, populate me. Got my Astra token right there, my database administrator token. And I come back here and what do I do next? I am in the playground and I have that and I want to create something. So in this case, I'll copy this over. I'll go to my playground and I'll create a table. So my key space name is what I already had. And this is to, to, to do the GraphQL schema is Netflix key space. And the table name that I'm using is reference list. And this is just the syntax to create a table within that key space. If not exists, true. So it'll just be, you know, uh, uh, a non operation if, if it happens to be there. I have a partition key, which is the label. And then clustering keys, I have the value, and I'll sort that, or I'll store that on disk. So um, let's go ahead and create that with the key that I have in there. So I've created that reference list. And let's go ahead and see what we have next. insert some data. So let's get some data in here. Basically, this reference list is for genres. So we have a bunch of movies, movie genres that we want to put in here. Um, and like I said, I mean, this is really, I mean, this is a simplified example of what Netflix does, but it's true to form in the sense that Netflix stores every piece of data that's not a kind of a CDN um, optimized movie file or, or picture file in Cassandra, including account data, you know, recommendations, where you last left off, you know, if you are on your phone and you're on Netflix and then you start it on your laptop once you get home off of the train or whatever, then um, it'll start where you left off. And all of that data uh, is stored in, Net in Cassandra. Um, so let me copy this out. I may have already done that. And then I'll go to my GraphQL screen and I'll write my query or mutation here, but I also need to put that in here too. So let me get that token again, and I'll populate that so it knows how to authenticate. And I'll get rid of that. And I'll add all this data. Uh oh, I have some sort of problem here. Oh, that's right. One step I missed is that I want to put in change the key space from system to Netflix key space. I was <laughs> trying to insert that into my system key space, and it's like, what? So there we go. So we have all of that in there, so we can add some, some other data if we want to. Uh, let's see. So in terms of getting data, so that's, that's, you can see the basic syntax that we have for inserting data into our cluster is just inserting and then the genre uh, is the label and the value is, you know, what we have for that value. And let's go ahead and get all the, the genre here. And then we'll go ahead and see, oops, wrong one. I thought I copied that. Never mind. So we can see that it's stored in the database. And just as a kind of a interesting exercise here is that you can store it in GraphQL. And if you have somebody who's more familiar with Cassandra, like one of the, the back end Cassandra engineers at Netflix, you can let me do expand. That means that it goes horizontally instead of like vertical columns. So it makes it easier to read is select 
star from uh, Netflix reference list. So you can see it stores it in a way that you can connect with um, the Cassandra interface or the GraphQL interface or a REST interface, and it really doesn't care. It'll, it's a native interface into the database. Um, so let's go back. What else do we need to do here? I suppose we need some movies. So let's create a movie schema. And what we're doing here, let me bring it over to the playground here under the GraphQL schema. We have a movies by genre. And what this means is that my partition key is going to be the genre. So we're going to put a bunch of movies in each genre into the cluster. The clustering keys are going to be the year and the title of the movie, the year descending. So the more recent movies are going to be at the top or in the front from a data perspective. That'll optimize that. And then we have our synopsis for each movie. We have the, the title of the movie as a clustering column, and then the synopsis, duration, and then a thumbnail, and it says text. And so we're really not storing the actual thumbnail file in the database. We want this to be a CDN kind of replicated thing. And so, let me get that up. There we go. So we'll, I'll show you in just a minute, but let's create this table first. So that's done. Uh, we'll go back here. And we're going to insert a handful of movies. So, you know, Inception, Prometheus, Aliens, Blade Runner, so just some movies that we might like to see in our, um, in our database here. So let's put those in the database. Looks like they're there, but let's go double check. And we'll play with that a little bit. So we have getting getting the movies out of there, and we can see that you know this is just basic GraphQL uh, with the order by and all of that kind of thing. Um, one thing that we could do, and this is part of the kind of the the what our task is for today, is how do we do paging? Because you know you, you look at Netflix and everything doesn't load on the screen at once. You you want to do that on demand as you scroll or as you click the arrow. And so let's let's start with some sort of paging built in here into our GraphQL, which we can implement in the back end as well. But just as an example, so we have a page size of two, and what that does is it gives us you know two in a page, and it gives us a page state at the end, which is kind of handy because we can do something like this. If we go down a little bit further. If we have options, page size two, and then put a page state in there, then it, it, it keeps the cursor alive, basically, or, you know, not cursor, but you know what I mean, is it keeps it so that we can get to the next page as we scroll, for instance, in a, in a UI setting. So if we do that, these are our first two um, year descending, and so we'll get what is that? Aliens and uh, Blade Runner in the background. And you can see here too is that the thumbnail is this, you know, MP4 file that relates to. I think all of them or most of them are are uh, set up correctly um, to to point to a movie file that has to do with that. Uh, that movie. So one thing that we can do as well is we can download this data set. Hopefully you're able to follow along. If not, everything's laid out in this GitHub repo for you. You can download the data set. I have it kind of baked into my, my back end here, um, is you can download the data set. And it's not very large. But what it does is it allows you to see how you can, let's go back in here. We'll load some data. And if it's up to like 40 megabytes, you can upload your data set in this UI. I, I cloned the repo in my local environment, and so it's in the data directory of this. And so it's just a CSV file. So if I do that, it's going to tell me, OK, let's upload this. And then it gives you a preview of what's in the file with all of the fields and the intended um, types. And so what I'll need to do is say, the only thing I really need to specify is the, the partition key, which in this case is a genre. And so I can add clustering columns if I want to, but as soon as I have the partition key, it should be fine. And um, now I just need to tell it what table 
to put it in, or the key space to put it in, um, which is a Netflix key space. So it's it's uh, importing now. So what it does is it triggers a job in the background. It takes about a minute or something like that. So it'll it says that I have my my workshop DB created, um, and it'll in the background do that. Let me see if I've got everything caught up here. So it's a handy way to just kind of load some data in the background. And a number of if you go in here, there's a sample app gallery that has a bunch of different apps, and a lot of those apps use that same interface to just give you an idea of how to mess around with the database. Um, one thing that we added to today, as a matter of fact, yesterday or today, is the ability to add another region. So if I wanted to, to, to add a region, um, I can add one of the other regions in Azure, and I can replicate over to that region. Um, so if I have, uh, Cassandra's always been able to do that, and that's one of the reasons why Netflix uses it. Uh, but um, but now with the serverless model, we needed to to kind of have some specifics around uh, how to handle that when in a cloud native environment. Um, so let's see, is that okay? The load job started. I think it's going to take less than a minute. It's a pretty small file. Um, let's see where we're at now. So I should be able to get. Oh yeah, it's going through, telling me what I need to do with the. All of that, and then we say what target, and then I should get some emails that say that I can, I can check that out in CQL. Let me just see if I can do that now. Uh, started. Uh, let me mess with it. Let me see. Select. Let's do expand on. Select star from Netflix movies by genre. Limit ten. Looks like it's done. So we have like Suicide Squad, Toy Story, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, of course, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, so a bunch of different movies loaded. And so that's that's how we've kind of bootstrapped the database for the purposes of what we're trying to do here. So what we want to do then is in this repo, um, you may notice that there, there's not just data in this repo. Let's go ahead and deploy to Netlify. So I'll connect to my GitHub account. So that's why you need a GitHub account, is that it's going to, um, you're going to give it some access so that Netlify can um, deploy this repo and essentially fork that repo into your own GitHub account and then make that into yeah, it's, it's deploying now. So it'll 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 um, deploying that from. If you look in the bottom here, my has, my my roommate from college decided that my computer was called the Jerometron 5000. So he just decided that. So I thought that would be an easy way. If you look at the bottom of the, this window, Jerometron is uh, my handle, and so it, it forked the repo into my GitHub repo, and it's now deploying into that repo. Um, in in Netlify, and so it'll be a, just a minute for it to kind of download, and then do some building, and it's deploying, and and all of that. And what it does is is it deploys from my um, my own repo. And and so what we need to do is go to my repo that has been configured here, and let me open that into a new window. Oh, well, it's doing that right now still. Okay, well, I'll I'll uh, I won't be impatient. I'll let that kind of finish. Hopefully everybody's doing well in the background there. Um, let me see if there's any questions in the interface. Thanks, Eric, for answering questions in here. Um, like he says, there's some some Discord stuff that that if you want to join Discord, we have kind of a continual, persistent conversation in there. If you have any questions about this, um, I'm kind of going through this fairly quickly, but hopefully it's not too hard to keep up with this. Um, site deploy in progress. This is still 
Let me see where this is at. Ah, it's still, let's see if this is, this is trying to deploy still. Um, it will take just a minute. And what we'll do is open Git pod and Git pod is a nice environment and to, to do all of this in. And let me scroll up and just show you um, what else is in this repo. So you'll see that uh, there's the source, which has some basic stuff in there. There's like the components, like you have like the scroll bars and a nav bar and a card for each movie and that sort of thing. And then you have an index.js and it's fairly simple when it, when it comes down to it. Um, you can see in here, there's like the hero section and this does a get movies on the Netlify functions. And so if we go to the get movies in the functions, um, the GraphQL is fairly straightforward, right? So the query, so you have like this Astro GraphQL endpoint, which is in the environment that we'll set. Um, and then all we're really doing is what we did in the GraphQL playground, right? So we have uh, the movies by genre and we can get the page state and that's what is coming out of the request and we have the genre that's coming out of the request and we have the page state down here and the uh, to keep keep in the background um, as well as the uh, various values and then you know just what we do on, on various responses and we have the fetch that gets it based on the token and the token is the other thing that we need to populate in here let's see if this is completed looks like it's done so if we go into here uh, this is my fork of the same thing and so i could come into that and and deploy into git pod but then it would deploy into git pod in the data stacks to get the devs repo, and that's probably not a good idea. Um, so let's go down to back where we were, and this will deploy in my own environment in Git pod. Where are we here? Okay, so this will be using the Jeromatron repo. And what this does is it sets up an environment for me it has the repo and it'll go into a uh, visual code, visual source, vi sorry, visual studio code um, environment online in my dedicated environment. And then I can configure some things to make it all work together. So this is gonna jump in. It has all of the information in here and then it's doing all of the NPM initialized stuff in here. And so we'll have that all set up I'm going to add a new file in here as it's doing that. So let me jump back into here. I'll verify that I'm in the environment that's appropriate and that should be fine. Um, the other thing that I'd like to do is make sure that I have an environment. So this sample environment um, is, let me uh, create a new if you're familiar with like the NPM net, Netlify stuff, you just need an environment to, to put some of the variables that you need in there. Um, so for example, if I want to do this, and I'll get rid of this. And so what I need here is my token that I've gotten, where is that? Okay, there's my token. Put that guy in here. And then my endpoint. And if I go to connect in here, I'll scroll down to where it says write data, and it gives me the endpoint in there with the Netflix key space already built in. So I'll go in here, I'll go to connect, GraphQL. And what's interesting too, just as an aside, is there's also a document API. And that document API, usually Cassandra needs some schema associated with it. And it hasn't acted in the past like a graph or a, a document database, but 
The document API allows you to just persist JSON, like nested JSON, and it creates a table indexes for you and all that kind of stuff. And so um, we can add indexes to our GraphQL stuff, but uh, the document interface is, allows you to do that um, and does that for you. So here's, let me jump back here. So change the location to the key space URL in the play, GraphQL playground, which we already know is Netflix key space. Um, and then we can go back into our environment. Oops, I don't want to have that. I want to go here. Okay, so that's my Astra endpoint. And this auto saves, which is handy. So what else do I need to do here? So let's double check that I'm in the right place. And this will say, are you sure you wanted to allow this? Sure. Okay, so I am in Jeromatron. No worries there. No dramas. Okay, and then I install the Netlify CLI in this environment. Once it's all downloading the world, so to speak. Luckily, data is not in lockdown, so I can download it from all sorts of places and don't have to worry about it too much. That's all done. And then I got all this information and did not leave the curly braces in there. Oh yeah, well, I've already done all that. So once I've done that, let me make sure that I did that correctly. I have my environment here. Perfect. And then I'll go on here and then I will npm install to kind of build this all up. And then we'll launch the application. And that's basically, I mean, this is just a normal Netlify thing. Um, so we'll, we'll launch it in the environment in Netlify. So it's kind of just spinning up a, a dev. So Netlify dev basically starts a local dev environment. You can do this on your machine as well. And then it spins it up on the local host. And so it says, okay, I got my Netflix account. And this, you can see, based on the very simple interface that we have in here, allows you to have, we have all the components in here, we have the nav bar and all that. If we can go into a new browser tab, we click on this, and you can see it in here. So aliens, watch this as a kid, it scared me quite a bit, with Ripley and Newt and everybody. So you have all these different genres, and then it auto plays the MP4 that gives you a little bit of a, a, a blurb about what it is. You can go to the movies, and this kind of just gives you an idea of how you can make this all work. And these are the, the IMGR um, CDN type of data files that were out there um, that we talked about earlier. And so if we restart, refresh this page, it might be a different inception. Oh, I think it. <laughs> this is still aliens, but it's got the, the wrong, it's just a data thing. Um, anyway, so this is all seems to be working okay. So that's in our dev environment. We can also log in to Netlify and have that go to production. So let's quit out of that. Oops. And I'll log in there. And the login needs to go to a new window. It, it, this simple browser doesn't really doesn't really help with that. So I'll authorize this. I'll log in there because I'm already logged in to Netlify. And then I will link it. Let me go on here and, and again. It doesn't like that any either. Oh no, this is, says, do you, how do you want to link this? Do you want to do, yeah, let's just do the remote origin of that. And it says, sounds good. Let's do this thing. And then I will take the ENV file and upload it to Netlify. So if I do that in here, I will import the environment variables that I put in this environment file. It's kind of handy. And then I will deploy it to production in Netlify in my little free environment that I have. 
So I'll build it first. Making the product, production build. So this is taking it from dev all the way up through to production. And then I'll run deploy dash dash prod to just make it work. So this is where it is. And then there's the Netlify CLI command to open up the site. So let's do that. And I think it'll just do it in here and then we can put it into this window, then it'll go to, so this is just the simple uh, interface here. So there's Terminator 2, also scared me as a kid. There's that guy with the sword and it was all trippy when I was a kid. Okay. So we have the same interface and it's been deployed in the Netlify app environment with a URL that I kind of, I did the kind of the, the, the basic URL there. Um, so there it is. It's all put together. Hopefully you've been able to do this as well. Um, you've deployed everything to Netlify. And so from start to finish, this isn't really too bad. Um, we, we had some pre-baked goods, so to speak. Um, Astra is uh, pretty handy to have this. I mean, there's other databases out there that are cloud hosted, um, you know, DynamoDB, Cosmos. Uh, but I think the, one of the nice things here is that this is a cloud agnostic thing so that you can um, run it in whatever cloud that you want to, um, as well as having these APIs that are pretty nice to, to have as a, um, a native interface into your database. So you, you, it's a first class citizen. So um, you, can, you can do essentially what Netflix does. You can create your own streaming service to, to compete with Stan. And so you can host like the castle or whatever if you want to, you know, be your own ideas man, so to speak. Um, I just watched that movie uh, pretty ridiculously funny. But, um, and we also have, so you have the databases and we also have a managed Pulsar in here. Um, which allows you to uh, do things like you can CDC from your uh, database into other services like Elastic or whatever. Um, that's that's uh, kind of a nice feature to have as well. So hopefully this has been helpful for you today. Um, let's see. Is there any other questions that people have? I know this looks a little bit trippy in the interface, but let me jump out of the, the presentation mode. Uh, well, let me let me finalize what we have in here, and and just show you how this all comes together. So we have this GraphQL. This is kind of a replay of what we've done. We have this GraphQL layer, and then what we did, just to kind of recap, we deployed that to we created the instance, and then we have a token. We created the, the GraphQL in here as a native native interface into the database. And then we have Netlify, which does its thing to push to its kind of CDN through their through their system. And then Gitpod is the one that takes everything in an environment, an online dev environment. It edit it like you can edit the code, set it up, and run it locally with the Netlify dev. Uh, and then it pushes, we linked and pushed that environment up to the Netlify uh, site manager. Um, and so this is a serverless infrastructure up here, and this is a serverless infrastructure down here. And so, you know, everything's serverless now. I mean, obviously there's servers running in the background, but it makes it nice from a billing perspective. Um, so you just pay for what you, what you use. And you get the nice emoji smiley face. The other nice thing about Astra, the database, um, in a serverless form, is that it, it it elastically scales with you. You know, we we've tested from you know a few thousand requests per second to you know 20 million requests per second, and it's I think it's a P99 latency of about 20 milliseconds, which is actually really good. And it, and and the the serverless nature of it means that you can scale in seconds. And so if you have a bursty event, like, you know, you're opening up vaccinations to a new site, or if you have an event like this, 
Um, you can scale very easily and very quickly so that you never have any sort of downtime. And you just pay for, you don't have to worry about like pre-provisioning the ops. It, it, it provisions that out because you're paying for the throughput. You don't have to worry about that at all. And then it'll scale back down. So you're not really paying for persistent infrastructure. That's the nice thing about this serverless system. And it's all secure through the like the the the, the keys that are for your organization and that sort of thing. So we did the deploy to prod, and there's a bonus there um, in the repo if you want to do that. Um, and then again, I just want to to call your attention to our data stacks um, Cassandra day to kind of give you a hands-on workshop for a full day. It's free, um, and it also has a call for papers. If you want to build some sort of demo or do something like that, we'd love to have you involved. Um, and just want to invite you out to that. Um, thank you again for, for your time today. Um, and I hope this isn't too trippy, and I hope that that gives you some ideas to kind of uh, apply your your graphql expertise in a in a new way and um give you give you some new thoughts in terms of cassandra i know cassandra traditionally hasn't been as developer friendly but i think we're making strides with the um with astra with stargate and and with that sort of thing and so you leave the management of of astra uh cassandra to us and you leave the API gateways to us and you just focus on developing whatever applications that you might dream up or, or for your organization. You know, we work with a number of banks here in Sydney, telcos and, and others, um, and also a lot of startups. Um, Netflix is just one of several um, that use it for like um, streaming, a streaming gateway and other things. So thank you very much. I'd uh, like to also call your attention to, we have a, uh, a cloud native database and a self-managed form, and we call that Kate Sandra. Um, so if you're looking for a way to deploy this style of a cloud native database, um, we're working on open sourcing the ways that we do that in Astra, but um, the cloud native uh, style of database that's out there now in a self-managed form is under the banner of Kate Sandra. So KateSandra.io, that's the, the website to get to um, using uh, Cassandra in a cloud native way. Um, so if there's nothing else, I think that's everything for today. Uh, hope that hope that you've enjoyed um, building this and and look forward to to seeing so hopefully some of you at the Cassandra Day next month. Thanks, everyone.